the Oscars were just a few days ago. Well, now that I'm recording this like a few weeks ago, I wrote this part of the video a few weeks ago. Me and my family were watching the Oscars and all of a sudden Becky G appears in the screen singing a very short song from the Flamin' Hot Cheeto movie. My first thought was, dang, how was this song nominated for the Oscars? Then my second thought was, dang, I forgot Becky G existed. Then my third thought was, dang, I forgot I've been meaning to make a video about this movie for like a year. <laughs> Since we're discussing the Flame and Hot movie, I thought it was only appropriate for the snack of today for it to be a uh, vegan cheese twist by Wairana. I you thought I was gonna grab Cheetos? Not today, son. Look, it's gluten free, it's non GMO, uh, zero trans fat, vegan. This movie is basically an hour long ad, so they want me to crave Cheetos, but here I am eating vegan cheese twists. How about that? Today I'm here to talk about the things that I don't like about the Flamin' Hot movie. I don't want to say Flamin' Hot Cheetos, but it's just Flamin' Hot. Stupid name. Essentially, the movie is about the origin story of the Flamin' Hot Cheetos, how it came to be, who invented it, who was the mind behind the idea. Richard Montañez, who works as a janitor in a Frito Lay factory, has the brilliant idea of uh, spicy Cheetos. And you know, he was like, How could I do this? I'm just a janitor. Like, how am I supposed to get my big idea up to the freaking higher ups, right? But with determination and help with the, of his family, he managed to uh, bring the idea to life. And that's basically what the whole movie is about. Originally, I wanted to make a commentary video of me reacting to a movie, um, but then I realized. Disney Plus doesn't let me screen record and that's where I was gonna watch the movie. I don't know how people do it. I, I know there are hacks, but I'm not smart enough. I've tried multiple things and I still haven't figured out how to do it yet. But that's not stopping me from making this video because I still have a lot to say about this movie. My first problem is the story isn't even real. Allegedly. I gotta say allegedly because everything's alleged. Biographical movies, there's always, it's never 100% the real story. There's always things altered or exaggerated, you know, to make it a good movie, which there's nothing wrong with that. The way they have promoted this movie, they kind of insinuate that it's the origin story. I feel like that's very false advertisement and technically that's not illegal because they're not really saying that this is the origin story. They're just saying, they're just is insinuating that it's the origin story because technically the movie is about an origin story the, the origin story had doesn't have to be true we're not making the documentary of the flaming hot cheeto we're making a film about richard montanez and his life they're very smart i got it give it to them but then i came to learn that the whole story probably is like way falser than i thought It, it kind of is like a completely made up story. Well, we'll get into that. What I found was an article of LA Times that interviewed people from that era in the 80s where the whole origin story took place. Most people don't remember Richard Montañez taking place in the... They have no records of him. Richard Montañez, who claims to have invented the Flamin' Hot Cheetos, they never found records of him. Like, he was never there. And it was the quote-unquote brainchild of a group of peeps in Frito-Lay. But then it was, they gave it to a woman. Uh, I really don't understand really the positions. But then a woman named Lynn Greenfield was the one who like, I guess, pitched the idea or I'm not sure exactly how it all played out, but I've seen a lot of versions of the story and I don't know if like, I don't know, the, the story is very convoluted, I think, and I feel like people gotta piece it together, so. And Frito Lay went to and responds to if Mr. Montañez was ever a part of the making of Flamin' Hot Cheetos and they were like, no, we, we don't know about this, but they never like sued him or anything. So I was thinking, hmm, how has Richard Montañez uh, gotten away, away with so many things of writing books, 
going to speeches, holding conferences, going as a guest speaker. And how has Frito Lay never sued him or like that he's never gotten in trouble with that? Then I realized, yes, yes. Are you currently recording? Yes. Get it. I'll. I have a tooth for you. This one. Okay. It's just—it's not supposed to make any sense. And I think there for two reasons. One, technically, he's not lying a hundred percent because he's not just a random guy who just claims to be the inventor of lemon hot Cheetos. There's some truth to it. He did work as a janitor. He did have a rags to riches story, and he did pitch something to Frito Lay. Wasn't flaming hot Cheetos? It was flaming hot popcorn. Dun dun. Yeah, it was popcorn. In the movie, he makes an, a call to, 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 to the president of Frito Lay. I'm not sure if that actually happened. Well, I mean, with the president. That call did actually happen, but in the movie, it was him pitching the idea of Flame and Hot Cheetos. But in real life, it was him pitching. It's like, hey, y'all gotta make it into a franchise, you know, like make some dough, you know? Get some of that flaming hot clout. And not just Cheetos, but make it into popcorn. So that was a successful story. So basically, I think the reason why Frito Lay hasn't really like sued him or like is because it's just good clout. It's good marketing for him because for them, it seems like they, they helped someone. A, a Mexican American. They boosted him and they believed in him. Doesn't matter his background. He, they gave him a chance. And look at him now. Look how successful he is. When they're asked, like, did he actually invent them? I mean, they can't lie. So they're like, no, he didn't really invent it. But they're not like fighting against like having a movie about it, you know, or like books and stuff like that. So that's my conspiracy theory. So now the issue. What is my issue with this? I re- well, I guess I already said that. I read on a script, but I always freestyle and while recording sometimes, so I'm kind of processing things right now. One second. Okay. So I do think that's why Plymouth Hot came to be because, because yeah, they just said it's about a guy who invents the hot cheat Plymouth Hot Cheetos. But they never say it's a real story. Like they just say it's an origin story. Like they, it's just about a guy who invents flaming hot Cheetos, and that's the story. They never claim that that's the real story. They just insinuate it, you know? Because what do you think? They're gonna make a movie about a rags to riches story instead of just like a group of people who work for Frito Lay trying to brainstorm the ideas of flaming hot Cheetos. You know, of course they're gonna do the rags to riches story because it's more interesting and more inspirational. Uh, I think it's just deceiving to the customer because even though anybody can look up whether the origin story is true or not, not everyone's going to research it. Um, and it's just kind of misleading to the customer. I'm sure a lot of people since watching the movie have bought like a pack of flaming Hot Cheetos thinking, oh, there's so much story behind this and I can't believe uh, I'm basically supporting uh, an idea of a of an uh, Mexican-American immigrant and I, guess I feel so proud of them. And little do they know that that is basically not true. That's kind of a lie. And I think that's just very shady. So like I said earlier, I don't think there's nothing wrong with altering a true story and making it into a movie. The movie can still be really good and it can share a meaningful story. So to the question, is Flamin' Hot the movie a good movie? This is gonna be kind of hard to, to review this movie because I can't record clips from the movie on Disney+. Plus. So the only way I can show you clips of the movie is just by using clips from YouTube. I couldn't find that many, but I'm gonna try my best. And also, it's midnight and I kind of delirious. I'm a little bit delirious. Just kidding, I, I sleep at like 3 a.m. every day. I don't know. That's kind of just like a, an excuse. Anyway, what was I going on about? So, after a bunch of testings of the recipes, they finally find the perfect recipe. Not. And I gotta interrupt for a second. You know, they're not the worst thing in the world, but 
they they got no flavor like it's just spicy but they got no flavor to it the name flaming hot is a perfect name because it's literally just hot nothing else that's why jalapeno cheddar is a pure anyway so next thing scared that they've been begging for help and they got a broke mexican kid from wasti as their hero they don't know what to do with that actually they do they said that would make a really good movie <laughs> When Richard gets the president of Frito-Lay to fly all the way over to the factory just for the presentation that never happened, that's when I'm like, okay, this is definitely not a true story. Because <laughs> I remember when I first watched this movie a year ago, I did have the idea that this was a true story to some extent. But in this part, I was like, okay, this is definitely fake. People were tracking down files of the Frito-Lay history unit universe mcu universe and apparently this conference did not happen richard the janitor that's my nickname for him this night is feeling down doesn't know what to do but then a video of what was his name again the person the ceo of frito for what frito lay gave an inspirational message to the workers uh in the factories this was a very strange scene in my opinion I get what they were trying to do, but it just it did not click to me because well, what were they trying to do exactly? Um, you know, he could have gotten inspiration. Why did he have to get inspiration from the CEO of all people? I just don't like how they executed it because it was just giving such a parasocial relationship and <laughs> just using buzzwords over here. So finally, after all the hard work and that Flamin' Hot was able to get enough sales for it to be successful. The ending of this movie was quite upsetting to me. When I tell you the first time that I watched this scene, I literally thought that this was a bit like a funny part of the movie because, you know, they did the funny part of in the factory where he imagines himself being like, oh, it's gonna be so good and it turns out to be like expectation versus reality type of memes. Um, I thought this was this was kind of like the same thing because it was just so weirdly executed the way they like the music and the, the very exaggerated expression and I know that's kind of like what do you mean exaggerate like they're supposed to have emotion in this scene it's supposed to be the final scene but it still felt very weird and I think I know the reason why it feels so weird to me I was like, is this really the happy ending? Like, is this really what we strive to do in this universe? You know, let me tell you a little, some, a little secret. One of the reasons why I procrastinated planning this video out is because I couldn't find a different alternative that I could have used to end this movie. And I know that is kind of like, I'm like, being, I should... Why did I have to film this at 1 a.m.? <laughs> I'm actually not sleepy. I just don't think I'm thinking very well. <laughs> it's just an excuse. I'm lucky this is taking place at 1 a.m. Because I can blame it on my sleep. I didn't have like a better alternative or like a better idea of how this could have ended. And I don't mean like a better as in like, Oh, this was so good. I can't even... Im no, I mean better as in like, Where do we go from here? Like, what is a better... like? it's so sad i think like the pyramid scheme like <laughs> i realized there's kind of no realistic ideal way this could have ended well the happy ending is just that he got promoted and he got rich and i guess that's everything that we need to be happy in this world in this society while him gets to the top the rest are still just working away and having the same life as him as he once had so to answer the question that I haven't answered up to up until this point, is Flaming Hot a good movie? I I don't know. I don't think it's a bad movie. Whenever someone asks me if a movie is good, I never know how what to respond because there's so many factors that go into making a movie like the acting, directing, camera work, script, overall storyline. Like there's just so much more. It's a lot. So I never know what to base my answer off of. I guess in general, but it's still pretty hard to condense everything. And I've been very harsh um, talking about this movie, but honestly, I enjoyed it. when The first time that I watched it, I enjoyed it. 
Well, some parts, because some parts were kind of painful to watch, but um, most of the movie was pretty enjoyable. I enjoy watching it with, with my family, you know, since it has a lot of like Hispanic, Mexican humor, like obviously something that a lot of audiences can relate to, and I think that's why most people like it not necessarily because of the story itself but it's just people like to look at representation it's a nice feeling to have and i know i've been very harsh the whole video but you know i i think sure it's a good movie and i'll recommend it to people i guess but and i think the overall message that they wanted to portray in this movie was good and you know doesn't matter your background you know with your determination and that help a family, family love, you can do anything. Also, I think Judy was very miscredited over here. She did a lot and they didn't give her that much credit. And yes, of course, they did say, oh, hey, my, hey, without my love, I couldn't have done it. But still, they could have given her more like a comprehension comprehension because basically throughout the whole movie she was the one who taught richard how to do presentations she was the one who encouraged them she was the one who gathered all the cheese she was the one who prepared the the spicy dust she was the one oh, she did so many things man and she she <sighs> cannot believe my camera was off. Good thing that the audio was recording, but oh, I need to get another camera. This has been happening for so many years and I need to get a different camera, but everything's so expensive. <sighs> Thanks for watching, guys. Give me some requests on what movies to cover and hopefully movies that I can find on YouTube or something because so I can screen record them. Um, and I also need to make videos that people like so people get so people give me more attention and more views I want to be rich and filthy rich and to the top the top of my pyramid scheme, you know, so let me know about that Moral of the story I think we're doomed